If you would this morning, Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. Before I get into the message, my older brother, I've told this many times, but it, I just want to tell this to get you thinking about something. And me and my older brother used to shine shoes down in Sulphur Springs as little boys. And uh, we'd get us a dime or a, just enough to get in the movies. And we'd dart into that movie house. My, my brother used to tell me, Daddy, Mama told him, don't you go to that movie now. If you do, we're going to whip you. And we had, buddy, they would too. And my brother used to tell me all the time, I, let's hurry up and get enough money to go to the movies because a whipping don't last but a few minutes, but that movie lasts two hours. And, uh, and we can go in there and have a good time. But I always feared the whole time I was in there because I knew when I come out that daddy and mama was going to find out about it and I'm going to get a whipping. And uh, now I want you to keep that in thought for just a few minutes, okay? Now I want to read you something. I want to talk to you about sin's payday. A lot of people today don't think that they're going to have to pay for their sins. But I got news for you, you are. And you can't get around it. And Matthew chapter 27. And when the morning was come, <clears throat> and the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went out and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasure because it is a price of blood. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore, that field is called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet saying and they took the 30 pieces of silver and the price of him that was valued whom they of the children of Israel did value and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. Heavenly Father we pray in these next few minutes now that you will hide us behind the cross. Lord I don't want people just to see me and, and uh, just hear my voice I want them to see you. I want the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Everyone that hears us today. Bless us, we pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I get into the message, oh, I want to thank uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Hugh, uh, Huckabee um, for the flowers that's in the front. She uh, got those and paid for them. And she wanted to do something, and, and I sure appreciate it. They're beautiful, aren't they? Now, I know that I'll hear from Brother Heidel, but uh, he calls me every week and lets me know if the flower's in place. And, uh, but he's in Georgia now, and, but uh, he, he's a real blessing to us. Amen. But, uh, but uh, Shelly, I sure do appreciate her doing that. They sure are beautiful. This morning, though, if, you, if there's a picture in the Bible that gives a picture of sin's payday, it's here. Now, notice, here's the bitter end of sin. Judas thought he could buy for himself joy and fullness of life for just 30 pieces of silver. And he had one ambition, and that was to get this money. He was willing to pay whatever the price to get it, even the price of betraying the innocent blood, the Bible says. Now, what I'm getting to, a many a person they never learn that real joy and complete fullness of life is not in the riches of this world. Those who think so end up in sin's payday like Judas at, 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 at late. And it has a bitter end. Now notice, these chief priests and elders, 
They were religious leaders of Judas's day. They were the representatives of God. Now you'd think they would be sympathetic towards Judas, but notice the hardness of their hearts. In verse 4, they said, What is that to us? See thou to it. You know what they were saying? Just go on to hell then. That's your problem. That's all they were saying. And you remember something. Religion will tell you the same thing. And I want you to watch this, please. The religious crowd of our day is about as hard as these people was. Because religion without love and compassion that the Jesus Christ gives us at salvation is not in them. They care nothing about the personalities of men or to organize, or, or organize religion and just cogs in the, in the meta machinery. Uh, if the cogs won't work, uh, they remove uh, no thought or personalities to it. And you hear what I'm trying to say. These religious had received what they wanted. They had been betrayed into their hands. Jesus had. They had realized their goal. They had achieved their aim. They wanted no more. What did they care about Judas? Judas had only been a tool in their hands to accomplish their aim. And when they, that was done, they cared nothing about the two. Let him go on to hell again. Did you know that I had a preacher tell me this one time? And he shot me to death. Now, I'm not talking about he was a godly preacher, but he was still a preacher. And this preacher said to me one time, he said, preacher, you've got to learn to work your people and let them go to hell. He actually said that to me as a preacher. And I said, brother, if I ever get to that place, I'm getting out of the ministry. Amen. Amen. I pray to God my heart will never get that cold. If there's one thing I've learned, brother, that people don't, dis they, they, they don't surprise me anymore, though. I don't care who they are. People don't surprise me anymore. I think I've seen it all. I think I've experienced it all in all these years that I've been preaching and watching people's lives and how the devil gets into people and gets them away from the Lord. And what I'm talking about, and I want you to see this, please, people think that they can get out into sin and it has no payday. Now, I got news for you. According to the Bible, as we look at this man called Judas, there's seven terrible things which sin pays off in. Number one, sin pays off in the weight of condemnation. There's an inward heaviness in the bitter end of sin. Sinners act of Christ, outside of Christ, are condemned already, the Bible says. The longer they live in sin, the greater the weight of condemnation becomes. Be but to re the redeem, the save, the born again, we have the blessed promise of Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to which, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Let me give you something. We don't wait to be redeemed from sin. We're redeemed from sin already in Christ Jesus. Amen. I told last week, I think it was, that a man down in the woods here, and, and this is so funny to me, people will listen to the whole sermon, and last week, you know how many, I can't believe how many people called me and asked me, but preacher, what happened to the men you were talking about? And they, they, I talked about a man being in, the, and he come uh, sitting in the woods down there, and I went out to see what was the problem with him, and he said, I'm going to commit suicide. And I stopped right there, and I don't know why I didn't finish the story, but folks, he got saved. I led him to the Lord. He's fine, okay? But I didn't finish the story, and I had people call, what happened to the man? Well, I, that ain't, wasn't even the sermon. But what I'm trying to tell you is, I'll go back to that man for just a minute. Sin has his payday. He lost his wife. He lost his family. He lost everything. But then when he met Jesus, he got everything. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm trying to tell you today. Sin pays off in condemnation. Number two, sin pays off in the guilt of conscience. 
That was surely true in Judas's case. When Judas betrayed the Lord, his only thought was to secure the 30 pieces of silver. Judas did not reckon with his conscience. He didn't stop to realize after he got the money, he still had to reckon with his conscience. But he be assured of this one thing now, I want you to get this, Judas did not find one minute of peace after he betrayed the innocent blood. The minute the elders placed the money in Judas's hands, the, it pulled on the cords of his conscience until he could bear it no longer and the Bible says he departed went out and hanged himself do you know what I found that people that do some of the dumbest stupidest things in life when they get into sin that they would never do unless the conscience got hold of them and they can't take it any longer the conscience will bear witness to you that you're a sinner and it'll haunt you till you come to the Savior, the Lord Jesus. Number three, sin pays off in ruin of life. I don't think many people ever realize this, that life itself is a great stewardship. Did you know that God gives you a life, but he gives you stewardship over that life? You're to watch over your own life and take care of your own life. And God's going to hold you responsible as stewards over your life. If you don't real live the right kind of life, God's going to hold you responsible for it. Now, every hour and every day is a golden opportunity then to serve the Lord. A true old saying states, only one life to live and that soon shall be passed. Only that which is done for Jesus shall last. Paul said, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And yet we hear people all the time say, I'm just killing time. I'm just passing time. I was talking to a man in a line, uh, in grocery line, and that's where I get half of my life anymore. I go to the grocery store. I go to the grocery store and back home. And so my living anymore is in the grocery store. You know what I mean? And so I go down there and I have myself a dime while I'm in there. And when I get up to the counter, this man said, man, I'll be glad. What time is it, sir? I said, I don't have a watch. I don't care what time it is. And he said, yeah, well, I want to get, I'm going to, I'll be glad when this day's over. I said, sir, do you realize what you just said? You'll be glad when you, part of your life is over? Man, I want to live every moment. Amen. I want to make every moment count. This life means something to me. I want to be steward over every moment that God has given me in this life. I want to enjoy it. Time is too precious to waste. One uh, time, uh, Pat, when time has passed on, you can remember this. You can never redeem it back. It's gone. You know what people do all the time that... Uh, that how people that house nervous breaks down over they want to change the past they want to go back and i wish i'd have done that i wish i'd have done this they talk about the past let me give you something you can't change one iota of your past it's done with amen thanks be unto god though he's a god of the second chance he'll give you a second chance he loves you and he cares for you and he wants you to have a good life and many people live their entire life without having been a blessing to their fellow man or to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Now remember, I, I told you this story many times, but a little lady that I was called from New York, a lady did, uh, her mother passed away over here in St. Petersburg, and she asked me to go over there and preach her funeral. And she was way up in the age, and I never will forget it. I went there to preach her funeral. There was nobody but me, her laying in the casket, and the Paul Bears. And I thought to myself, what a wasted life. What a wasted life. To come down to the end of life and have nobody care. Nobody care where you live or die. And I thought, what a wasted life. Did you know uh, I have people all the time come up to me and say, Preacher, I don't have friends. And I said, the way you have friends is to show yourself friendly. Amen. The Bible says so. I got many friends and I thank God for every one of them. But I'll tell you what, I don't go around to them telling all my sad sack stories. 
there's a lot of people you see them coming in you know oh, man and you ask how you doing they're going to tell you <laughs> amen and it's always downhill it's never anything good it's always downhill poor uh, I, somebody told me this while ago said every time I see you preacher you always tell telling something bad about you I said yeah my wife tell me poor poor pitiful to do yeah I know yeah nobody wants to see that nobody wants to hear you coming to them all the time poor poor pitiful me make your time count for something do good for somebody did you know every once in a while you know what it will be a blessing to you every once in a while find somebody that you can be a blessing to and you ain't got to tell them you ain't got to let them know anything about it. just write them a sweet little letter and say you know what i'm just thinking about you today and praying for you did you know what that means to people and every once in a while you know you can pull out a hundred dollar bill and say wait a minute anybody in here got a hundred dollar bill all right but anyhow you can put out a hundred dollar bill and send to somebody and you can never know they might be a they might need that at that very time and you could be a blessing to them you're a steward over your life be a blessing to somebody but if you want to live like the devil and be like the devil do you remember something brother your time will be gone in a little while listen sin pays all in failure of life in ruin of life sin pays off in the restless unbelief lost sinners are like the ocean waves they never have a moment of rest always searching for something to satisfy their hearts with that's the reason you have alcoholics and and uh, drug addicts and and sex abusers and all these other kind of things they're trying to satisfy something they're looking for and they don't even know what they're looking for it's not in this world. Did you know that God put within your heart to know Him? Every human being, God put within your heart to know the Lord and to serve the Lord. And until you do that, you have an emptiness of life and a restlessness. What a contrast between the restless life of a sinner and the saved saint. Jesus is a still water psalms 23 jesus is a waters of a thirsty soul jesus is a bread of a hungry soul jesus is the way for the lost jesus is the foundation of the sinking jesus is a righteousness for the unrighteous jesus is the hope of the doom Jesus is the answer to the confused. Jesus is a strength for the weak. Jesus is the wisdom for the foolish. Jesus is the captain for the soldier. Jesus is, the Bible says, our all and in all. Have you been watching the riots? Have you watched it? Anymore, I just turn the news off. I don't trust none of them around but i i looked at some of them and I, I i watch them telling the news and i watch these people and i say hi in the world is there anybody in here that if i wanted you to go to washington and burn the building down would you go i don't think none of you'd go i'm sure not going amen i'm not going to do those kind of things are you going to walk down the street and just slap somebody behind the head just to knock them down in the street are you going to stab somebody just to be stabbing them? Are you going to shoot somebody just to be shooting them? No. Why? I'm not of that mind. And you look at these crazy people and you wonder, what's wrong with them? They don't have the peace of God. They don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't know that sweet peace that I have and you have. Listen. Listen. Sin pays off in emptiness of the love of pleasure. The Bible says she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Yet the Bible does tell us that there are pleasures in sin. Do you know that? You go down here on 7th Avenue on a Saturday night and you tell those drunks and those bunch of nuts down there on 7th Avenue, you're not having any fun. You go down on the Ebor City on, on 7th Avenue on Saturday night and you tell them, y'all not having any fun. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. 
But the Bible says there is pleasure in sin, but only for a season. And then comes a the payday. You ever hear of somebody? I was with a guy before I got saved. I never drank. I never smoked. But I sit on a bar stool with those that did and play. They'd play the guitar and I'd sing and I'd carry on with the rest of them. But I never did any of the crazy things they did except that. But I sit down on a bar stool one day and a guy drank 12 beers. I don't even know how he could hold 12 beers. He sat there and drank 12 beers. And man, he living it up. But I went to work with him next day. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, don't say nothing. Don't speak out loud. Oh, my head's killing me. Oh, my head. I'm sorry. Throwing up, carrying on. That's what the results of last night was. Oh, he's having fun now. But there's a payday coming. Amen. And you think about this. I don't care what kind of sin you're in right now in your life. It's got a payday coming. You think I'll get by with it. No, you won't. There's a sin payday coming. The saved, though, has the joy which shall never end. Uh, we drink at the fountain that never runs dry. Amen. I don't have to get drunk to have a good time. I don't have to take dope and carry on to have a good time. I'm high on the Lord. And I mean that with all my soul. I have the best time in the world. I get out on my old lawn more by myself and just sing songs to the Lord. Just me and the Lord. Amen. I get out on the lake fishing just me and the Lord and just talk to the Lord and sing songs and quote the Bible. We have more fun. I never will forget playing golf with Dr. Rice and Dr. Rice got in the, in the cart with me and, and he was so close to the Lord back then when him would play together and he'd say, uh, Brother Strong, which way is green? I said, it's down that way. He hit the ball and he said, Lord, wasn't that a good drive? He didn't even know I was in the cart with him. He's talking to the Lord. And he'd make a putt and he said, well, boy, that was a good putt, wasn't it, Lord? Just having the time of the Lord. And what I'm trying to say is I don't need all the life pleasures in this world. I have the pleasure of the Lord all the time. Sin pays off in the emptiness of pleasure. Sin pays off in the tragedy of premature death. You can't help but see this truth if you look around us. Drunks kill and are killed on highways in America every day. Many young men and women die prematurely because of sex diseases. Matthew 27 Judas died prematurely. He hanged himself. Why? Because of the shamefulness of sin. Did you know what the book of Ecclesiastes said? The question is asked, why will you die before your time? Why will you die before your time? I honestly believe this. I believe I'm 84 years old because I've done my best to live a clean life for the Lord. I really do. And I praise God for every breath, every day of my life that he's given me the life that I got. But I see young people. And you know where you always see that on the people? They're seeing that right in their face. You can see it in their face. And you can see the love of God in their face too. Those that saved and born again. You can see it. Me and my wife went to eat one day. We were sitting in this restaurant in Booth. And across the little aisle is seated four other fellow preachers. And we didn't know who they were. And we were sitting there and we was talking about church. We just, uh, on Monday, we Sunday, we'd been to church talking about people getting saved, talking about the Lord. And this one guy got up and he come over and said, you're a preacher, aren't you? I said, yes, sir. He said, we want to pay for your lunch. Now, I like those kind of guys. <laughs> Amen. But he, they, they paid for our lunch and everything. And they recognized, though, that we were a pastor and a preacher's wife. It shows on you, folks. By the way, sin shows on you too. Amen. Had a woman that used to do my yard work over my lake place, and she'd come over to work for me. And 
she got on the mower. She, I, first time she come over, a man told me that she needed work, and I put her on the lawnmower. I got it, one of those John Deere lawnmowers. I said, now, you know how to operate this thing? She said, yeah, I got it. So I cranked it up far and away she went. Yep, 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 yep. Every direction in the world, I went over to it and I said, Gail, it would do good if you turn the blades on. It ain't gonna cut nothing, you know? And, and I knew what kind of life she lived and I won't go into all of that, but it showed on her face. It showed all about her, the way she dressed. One day she come driving up in an old car. A headlight knocked out, no, t no tag, uh, everything in the world wrong with it. And she said, I got a ticket. I said, no joke. <laughs> I said, Gail, you better quit driving this thing, this old car. They know that car and they know you. She said, well, you got to do what you got to do. And I said, yeah, and you got to go to jail. And guess what? And about the next couple of weeks that I needed her to mow the yard again, I called her daddy and her daddy said, she's in jail. So I had to go bail her out of jail. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, and you'll pay for it too. You'll pay for it. Now, I want you to get this. Lastly, I want you to see this. Sin pays off in the wailing of all eternity. You get in the book of Luke, chapter 16, verses 19 to verse 31. The beggar is full of sores who loved God and trusted him. There's two men here. The other, a rich man who fared sumptuously every day, yet had no time for God and fared sumptuously every day. The beggar died and was carried by the angels into paradise. The rich man died and in hell he lifted up his eyes and saw Lazarus afar off comforted in Abraham's bosom. But the rich man cries out, now listen to this, send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and touch my tongue for I am tormented in this place. Now listen to me. No answer. No water. No mercy was offered to it. And yet he cried to God Send Lazarus and just let him touch my tongue with water. I'm tormented in this place day and night. Let me give you some. Sin's final payday is the wailing of all eternity. I believe this. I believe I could get everybody in Brandon saved if I could take them to hell for just a second. And they could see all the wailing and all the burning and all the screaming and all the hollering going on in hell right now for just one second and realize this, they will never get out. It goes on for all eternity. Did you know that the first person that ever went to hell is still there? And he will be there for all eternity except for one plan. He will be called up out of hell one day to stand before the great white John judge. And God will say to him, depart from me. I never do you back in the lake of fire where you spend eternity forever and ever. Now, folks, I don't want anyone to go there. And I mean that. That's why I preach. That's why I beg. That's why I plead. That's why I go door to door. That's why I go to hospitals. I go everywhere I can to plead with people to come to the Lord Jesus Christ because sin has a payday for all eternity of weeping and wailing in agony in hell. But I think God does answer to it. Amen. God has a remedy. Listen to it. Acts chapter 16. Turn over there with me for just a second. Acts chapter 16. And I want you to listen to this. And I believe this. A man told me one time, can somebody get saved on their deathbed? That means they live like the devil all their life and they're laying there dying. Can they still get saved? Well, what about the thief on the cross? He got saved. He's on his deathbed. Amen. Listen, 
Luke chapter 16, if you would please, or just Acts chapter 16, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 16, and I want you to look at verse 30 and verse 31. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Saved from what? Life? No. Saved from your sins. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Amen. You know what believing on the Lord Jesus Christ is all about? It's not just believing that he was. Everybody believes that. Everybody knows that somebody died unusual some 2,000 years ago on a cross. Everybody believes that. If it got any sense at all, they know that's true. That don't save a soul. You know what believing on the Lord Jesus Christ is? It's putting all your faith on him to take you to heaven. If I, and I say this very reverently and very carefully, if I go to hell, it's Jesus' fault because I'm trusting him with all my soul and with all my heart to carry me to heaven. And I know he will. Amen. Why? Because the Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Every time I read that verse, 1 John 1, 7, I believe it is, is, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. You say, preacher, does that mean all of them? No, it's just 100,000. Amen? Maybe, maybe 10 or 12. No, the Bible says that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. You know what that means? That means every sin I committed in my past, every sin I'm going to commit today, every sin I'm going to commit tomorrow, ever sin I'm going to ever commit as long as I'm in this body. Jesus paid for them. His blood washes my sins away. And God the Father said he will put every sin that I've ever committed behind his back and he will never look up on them again and I can have perfect peace in my heart and I can lay down on my bed at night and go to sleep and not worry about it. If I die before I wake, I pray my soul to take. No, I don't pray that no more. I never pray that. I always say, Lord, if I die before I wake, praise God, I'm going to wake up in heaven. Amen. Amen. No doubt about it. You know why? I fully trust the Lord Jesus Christ to save my soul. I know I'm a sinner. You don't have to come along. Uh, well, I had a, one of my old football players. Uh, he came years ago, and we used to play football together, and we did some things we ought not to done. And he came in and he said, you a preacher? Like if there's anybody in the world not going to be a preacher, it'd be you. And uh, I said, yes, sir. And uh, we, he was talking about things we used to do and everything. And I said to him, praise God, they're gone. They're covered. You might remember them. And I might remember them. But my Heavenly Father don't because they're under the blood. Can I show you how it works? I'm a sinner like this microphone. I've sinned all of my life. And I'm a sinner. But I trusted the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on that cross for the forgiveness of my sin. And God submerged me in the blood of Jesus. And I'm under the blood now. And the Holy God looks at me through the blood. And I become under the blood as white as snow. And I'm free from sin. And I'm free from the guilty conscience. I'm free from all the agony. I'm free from premature death. God's time, my life is in His hands. Amen. Yep. Heavenly Father, would you have your way in every life here today? Help us to understand now that we're saved by the grace of God, not by our works, not by what we do. But praise God, he saves us anyhow because he loves us if we would come to him. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's say